the Afghan people from around the world feel so connected to their culture and traditions. Um, despite many of us have never visited or been back or haven't been back for decades, we still feel just as connected to what's happening in Afghanistan and to our people. So the hurt that we feel is collective. Now all three of you have lived most of your lives here in Britain and I'm wondering how therefore when there's the most terrible breakdown like this in your ethnic country, how does it feel? So we feel hurt, anger, and a lot of guilt. We all feel very guilty that we were the ones that were lucky enough to escape and not be there, because that could be any one of us, any one of our families, and we feel very, very helpless. Emotionally, as uh, Hamas kind of put it, we're all broken, we're all traumatized. When we flee Afghanistan, whether it's two decades ago, when I came as a child refugee, age 15, with nothing, no family support, hardly any education, um, I also brought in the scars of conflict with me in form of PTSD and anxiety and many other Afghans do. That's why they're triggered by the recent memories of what Afghanistan was like. I mean, you are a doctor and you have a doctor's charity which is helping people in Afghanistan. Does that in some way help you to deal with what's going on? For me, charity, setting up a charity, becoming a doctor was a way to heal my own scars. The country that's given me compassion, safety, allowed me and contributed to that country so passionately and I'm also doing it to Afghanistan. The little I can do is to help those people and heal myself, but they do need a lot more support. This is the time which we should not abandon them. Dr. Wahid, you do have a much stronger connection with Afghanistan. When were you last there? I was last in 2017, but our charity, which I founded, Aryan Teleheal, it's operational throughout Afghanistan, through all provinces, and we keep getting messages on our mobile phone. That's how it works. We get the cases, and unfortunately, because of what's happening, the recent events, we've already got many cases, and thousands of people are dead and injured, and it's a humanitarian disaster that's unfolding. What actually can you do at the moment? We connect doctors from the NHS and across the world to doctors to give expertise. But thousands of people need a lot more support on the ground. This is a humanitarian crisis. People are in parks without food, without shelter, without the basic living necessities. The international community need to intervene at this stage on the humanitarian front as well as on the peace building front. Now, he, you are a journalist. Have you worked in Afghanistan? The last time I was there was in 2013, actually, to do some reporting. And it was all, uh, in Kabul women's prison. I went and met the, uh, the minister for prisons a few days later, and he said that being incarcerated was like being like a bird. No matter how well you look after them, the essence of freedom is to be outside. But ironically, the women inside there were able to enjoy more freedoms than lots of women outside who uh, maybe weren't able to act or live their lives in the way that they would have wanted to. You are British citizens, but you're Afghani. Do you feel Britain has perhaps let you down? Has America let you down? Has the world let you down? I've been speaking about this for two weeks solidly, and it's only now that people are taking an interest. So of course I feel let down, because I know people that have met me and have spoken to me about Afghanistan, and I saw them posting about Palestine or Black Lives Matter, all the other movements that we should stick together and fight for. And yet that energy and that sentiment isn't reciprocated back for the Afghan people. So that's also one of the reasons that we feel abandoned. I came in with a dream here. I managed to realize my dream because I was given safety. There are so many others like me with their own dream, their own potential, that they can do something to give back to the country. We feel that it's too late for our country as it was. We don't have a flag anymore. We don't have, like they've taken our identity away. So to gain that back will take decades. Thank you very much for talking to us and can I wish you peace and your people peace.